If you are an experienced developer who understands asynchronous JavaScript programming and promises very well, but still finds async await a bit confusing, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to explain it in a very simple way so that you understand it once and for all. And now let's get started. All right, so we're going to take a look at three little examples of how, first of all, the async keyword works. Then we're going to take a look at the await keyword and last but not least the error handling within async await because I believe these three little pieces actually helped me to wrap my head around this topic. So first of all, the async keyword. We have a function f and it returns one and we also have the async keyword. Well, what this async keyword does is basically same as the promises because async makes the function have promises under the hood. And I can kind of prove this by running this file. So I'm going to write node index.js and you're going to see that we get a promise. So one wrapped in a promise. Basically, this async keyword makes sure that the function always returns a promise. And if we change this, so basically delete the async keyword and put promise.resolve and wrap it around one. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go down and run the same command. So node index.js. You're going to see that we get exactly the same answer. So basically, the async keyword makes the function run promises under the hood. And it indeed returns a promise, as you can, as you see. All right, but how do we actually get the raw value from the promise, right? Because in promises, we usually chain them. Well, with async await, you still need to chain the promise. So I'm going to create a new variable const. Actually, no, I'm not going to create a new variable. I'm just going to call the f function. And then I'm going to put dot then. And inside then you usually perform your operation. So I'm going to grab the val. And I'm going to console log the val to get the raw value. So console log, I'm going to put the val inside. I'm going to save this and also delete the console log because we don't need this anymore. I'm going to go to the terminal, run the same file, and we get one. So it's not a promise anymore because we chained it with dot then to get the actual value from a result promise, right? And as you may know, you can actually have an await, a top level await in the new versions of Node, so later than Node version 14 and the, in, the, in the modern browsers. So you basically can create such a variable, val await for f function and let's console log this out and see what we get. So I'm going to save this file. But before that, also, I almost forgot, make sure you change this index.js to .mjs and m stands for module. So unless you change this to mjs, it's actually going to throw an error because you're not allowed to have top level await. But now it should work. So let's try this mjs and we get one, basically the same answer as we got before with dot then. I hope you have a better understanding of async now, but now let's take a look at await because then we're, we're, we're going to be able to put those pieces together. So await is living inside this function that we're going to take a look at. So it's a simple function. First of all, let's clear the console. So what I have here is a URL to the some pizza API. Yes, it exists. And below that we have a get pizzas function with an async keyword. So we remember that it's going to return a promise. And we're going to uh, basically, as we already know, promises al always have three states. So pending, resolved and rejected whenever a promise gives throws an error and result whenever a promise has resolved with a normal value. So we're going to call this get pizzas function and it's going to parse the function like this. So we do some manipulation. This is fine. But now as the pass, uh, function reaches this line, it's going to get stuck because we here we have a fetch function which under the hood re also returns a promise and a wait keyword is going to basically make us wait until the pending is finished and it's resolved. So the fetch function is resolved. And as soon as it is resolved, we're going to be able to move to the next line. And in the next line, we have a response.json. But .json also returns a promise under the hood. So we have multiple promises in, inside this function. 
So it's gonna have a pending state and then we're gonna return a menu. But the interesting thing is that the get pizzas function itself also returns a promise. So exactly, it's, it's pending. So while we're calling this function below, uh, so while we're calling this get pizzas function here with an await keyword, as soon as the interpreter reaches this line, it also um, goes into the pending state. And then as we saw before, we can use dot then and dot catch to catch the errors. But speaking of errors, how do you actually handle errors with async await, right? That's a question that's been bugging me for a long time because it turns out there are multiple ways, but which one is correct? Do you actually try it or catch the error with a, within a try catch block or with a then catch? So in this example, we have uh, some broken URL to get the broken pizzas and obviously it's gonna throw an error. We also have a try catch block. As you may already know, um, async await goes along with, well, goes together with try catch. And to get the raw value, we usually do then and then dot catch. But as you can see, we already have a catch block here. So which one takes precedence and which one should you use? The catch with then or catch within it as a try catch block? Well, with dot then it's already understandable because if you can use the top level await, use that. If not, use dot then to get the raw value from a result for a promise. But what about catching errors? Should you again use with a try catch block or after dot then you do you just add dot catch? That, that's something we need to figure out. But let's first of all throw an error so that this block actually works. And I'm gonna create a, some fake error. I'm gonna write throw error and I'm gonna put, let's say, oops as a message inside. And I'm gonna save this so that we see the error. But first of all, before saving it, just let's add a custom message so that we can distinguish it. I'm gonna write error from the try catch and yeah, pass the error like this. And now I save it. Let's go to the terminal and run this index.mjs file. It's still mjs, but never mind. And now we have an error. Let's see what we have here. Error from the try catch error. Oops. So it worked as expected, nothing special here. But what if we try to catch it here as well after the dot then callback, right? And we're gonna write um, a separate message to see which one of them takes precedence actually. So console log, let's say error from the then catch, and I'm gonna pass the error again. And yeah, let's save it, let's run the same function again, or the same file again. And now we scroll up and we see that, no, it actually omitted it. It still used the try catch block. Okay, so as you can see, this result kind of kind of gives us an idea that you should be using try catch with async functions and not try to catch the errors with the dot catch callback as you see below. But let's remove the try catch block. And when you remove the try catch block, it indeed catches it at the end. So again, try catch simply takes precedence. And now you have an idea how to catch errors. Basically use the try catch block and don't use this unless you are using promises, of course. And that's it. I hope you now understand async await a bit more and try using it in your code more often so that you are comfortable with it. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with such cool topics, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.